What is up, X-Rounders and Vegans? I am just a simple new type, and in this episode, we are beginning our adventure through the Advanced Generation timeline on Mobile Suit Gundam AGE. The Advanced Generation focuses around what the Earth Sphere calls the Long War. The Long War, also known as the 100-Year War, is a century-long war between Earth and an unknown entity known as the Vegans. Our story will take place over the course of three generations, and we will follow Flit Asuna, as well as his son, Asumu, and his grandson, Kyo. Warning, the show presents the main antagonist as an unknown entity, but I am going to pull the curtain from the beginning and refer to them as Vegans, as I will be diving into how they came to be. So unlike most of my videos that kind of go with the story, I am just going to tell you some facts very early on, as this is a history video first and foremost. So if you want to keep the mystery going, I would watch the series before watching these videos. You have been warned. For the first half of the show, the antagonists are presented as a possible alien threat, but they are merely humans that evolved separately from Earth before the advanced generation. Now that I've taken the wind out of that sail, let's get into this. Before we dive into the show, we of course have to discuss how the advanced generation came to be. Sometime before the advanced generation, humanity colonized Mars. Everything seemed to be going fine until a fatal disease called the Mars Race sprung up due to a terraforming accident. This disease caused 20% of the colonists to die. Earth decided to deem this a failed experiment and covered it up by saying that all of the colonists were killed. While this was going on in Mars Sphere, the Earth Sphere colonists were going through their own civil war. The creation of the Earth Alliance and the Zalem Union were created during this time. It wasn't until the signing of the Silver Chalice Treaty that conflict ended amongst the colonies. The advanced generation begins for humans, while the people of Mars are left on their own. There is peace for some time, but in AG 101, the Vegans attack and destroy the space colony Angel. This would be later known as the day the Angel fell and the beginning of the 100 year war. In AG 101, Flit Asano was also born. Our story begins in AG 108. As the war continues, space colony Ovan is attacked by the Vegans. A young seven-year-old Flit Asano finds his mother being crushed by the colony debris. Before she dies, she gives Flit the AGE device and tells him that this will pilot the Gundam. AG-115 A now 14-year-old Flit wakes up after dreaming of his past. Emily comes to his door and they head out towards the base to run mobility tests on the Gundam. They run into Vargas, who was using the Gundam arm on a repair pod without Flit's permission. Emily wonders why he is so serious in regards to the Gundam. He tells Emily a story his butler once told him of a mobile suit passed down from generation to generation. It is a legend, but the AGE device contains data containing such a mobile suit and Flit intends to actually build it. Flit has been monitoring the unknown entity's attack patterns and thinks that they will attack Nora Colony next. No one takes him seriously. You will notice that the death of his mother at such a young age will be the majority of Flit's motivation for his hate of the Vegans. As he is talking to Emily, the Vegans just so happen to attack the colony. Gaffrins appear throughout the colony. The OVVF Gaffrin is the Vegan's main mass-produced mobile suit. It can transform into a flight mode which makes them look like dragons. The Gaffrin is armed with a pair of hand-mounted beam Vulcans and beam sabers, a chest-mounted diffuse beam cannon, and a tail-mounted beam rifle. It also has the ability to carry colony destroyers, which you guessed it, destroys colonies. The commander's version of the Gaffrin is purple. Deputy Commander Grodic Ainoa sends out units to defend the base on the colony. As Flit and Emily run towards the base, a Genoese comes in to defend the colony. The RGE B790 Genoese is the Earth Federation Force's mass produced mobile suit and started production around the beginning of the 100 year war. The Genoese was developed and mass produced in response to the attacks by the Vegans that first occurred in AG 101. Unfortunately, for more than a decade after its production, the Genoese was no match for the UE's mobile suits. It also has a shield, beam spray gun, and a heat stick. It will also use the Dodds gun after the AGE Gundam makes it. More on that later. Vargas brings the kids into the hangar where the Gundam is located. Flit wants the Gundam to be used in battle. He tries to get the pilot Largan to pilot the Gundam, but he uses the Genoese instead. As Largan opens up the hangar, a Gaffron was waiting and takes him out instantly. Flit has had enough and he gets into the Gundam. He adds the AGE device to the Gundam and powers it up for the first time. The Gundam AGE-1 Normal is named after the legendary Gundam from the Asano family. The AGE device that Flit's mother gave him contains battle data on every Asano family member since before the days of the Silver Chalice Treaty. 
The legendary Gundam that this suit is based off of is called the Savior because it was one of the key weapons used to bring forth peace amongst the colonists. The Gundam uses an OS called the AGE system, which collects battle data and can evolve to fight based on its environment. It also uses the AGE Builder, which can craft modular parts to the mobile suit, allowing for different modes that are referred to as the wear system. We will talk about these modes as they appear. It uses a Dodds rifle, a beam rifle, a shield, a beam spray gun, and a beam rolling lance. This suit is going to evolve as time passes by in the advanced generation, so we will be returning to this suit often. Flit heads out of the hangar to see that one Gaffron destroyed most of the base. Another join in the attack on the Gundam. Flit uses the beam spray gun, which has no effect on the Gaffrons. He then pulls out a beam dagger and continues attacking the chest, destroying one of the units. The Gaffrons scan the unit and retreats. The Vagans start to attack the colony from the outside. Grodic mentions that this is the day the Angel fell all over again. The Vagan use a colony destroyer on Nora Colony. The Federation commander of the colony, Hendrik Berzar, decides to launch the new battleship, the Diva. His plan is to evacuate the people to the colony core. Once everyone is at the core, they will use the new ship to tow the core out of the colony. Meanwhile, Emily and Dick. Dickay? Dickay? No, it's definitely Dick. Rather than head to the elevators, Emily and Dick heads towards the ship. While transporting the Gundam to the ship, Flit runs into a young girl who runs away from him. Emily and Dick continue to try to sneak onto the base. They sneak in and hear the captain of the D.Va, Captain Phoneroy, say that they don't intend to help with the Corps and they plan on abandoning the colony. Suddenly, Grodek comes in and stuns two of Phoneroy's men. Grodek takes Phoneroy prisoner. Emily and Dick just saw something they probably shouldn't have. They continue on and run into the D.Va. The D.Va is the new Earth Federation Forces flagship and designed to transport and support the Gundam AGE-1. It can also house many Genoeses. It has an anti-air cannon, a twin beam cannon, missile launchers, and later a photon blaster cannon with the help of the Gundam's AGE system. It also has a transformable ship that has a normal flight mode and an assault landing mode. We see the most important item being delivered to the D.Va, the AGE Builder. Grodek knocks out Fonroid and deletes all the crew data from the D.Va. He is assuming command of the ship. He lies to the crew and tells them that these orders come from EFF Command Center. Grodek decides that they will have to take off without the Gundam. Flit gets out and saves the young girl. He continues towards the ship. She introduces herself to Flit as Yudin. She starts to tell Flit directions on where to go as though she has some sort of extra sense. Hmm. They exit the colony and immediately engage in combat with a Gaffin. The Diva spots the Gundam on radar. Vargas tells Flit that because he fought one unit in the colony, it already has begun collecting data. Here is the first instance of the Gundam AGE-1's true potential. It collects data and algorithmically creates something that can survive based on said data. It evolves similar to humans and unsurprisingly very similar to machine learning. It is also a plot device to always allow for the upper hand, unfortunately, which isn't always a good thing from a story perspective. We talked about the Dodds rifle earlier when discussing the AGE Gundam, but this is actually the moment that it was created. Vargas sends the new weapon Flit's way. He fires the Dodds rifle and instantly takes out the Gaffron with ease. However, more Vagan mobile suits are approaching. A commander-type Gaffron starts attacking the Gundam. It prevents Flit from using the Dodds rifle. Mobile workers go out and attach the colony core to the D.Va. Bruzar finds out that Grodek is now the captain of the D.Va and puts his trust into him. Largan wants to use a Genoese, but none of them are combat ready currently. It looks like it is in the hands of the Gundam. Yudin tells Flit to calm down. He listens to her and is able to take out the commander, Gaffron. Meanwhile, a black unit is spotted inside the colony. The XVVXC Zetas is a high mobility mobile suit created by the Vegans and designed to be exclusively used by an X-Rounder. More on that later. In place of the Gaffron's tail-mounted beam rifle, Zetas is equipped with the Zetas sword, a removable tail that can function as a sword. The Zetas don't look like a dragon like the Gaffron's. Instead, it transforms into a jet-like flight mode. 
This unit is currently superior to the Gundam for now, but remember, the Gundam is able to evolve. It also has beam Vulcans and beam cannons. The Diva tells Flit to go inside the colony and see what the black mobile suit is up to. The Zetas go in and attack the base. It is unknown if Bruzar was able to make it out in time. However, they get a call from Bruzar. It seems he is still alive for now. He has to help remove the core from the base. He recalls taking in Flit. Yudin helps Flit as he fights the Zetas. Meanwhile, Bruzar is able to manually eject the core. The Diva is able to take off and tow the core out of the colony. Flit prevents the Zetas from attacking the colony any further. The Zetas decides to retreat. As the colony pulls out the core, the colony itself starts falling apart. Meanwhile, Bruzar is still alive. He is piloting a mobile worker carrying bombs. He sends an open communication to Flit, telling him that there is a reason he is still alive and that his legacy and the gun must live on. Bruzar kamikazes his mobile worker and it explodes. Nora Colony is destroyed, but the core and its citizens are still alive. Flit lets Yudin out safely and she goes to the colony core, but gives Flit her hairband before leaving. Meanwhile, out of the freezer comes the White Wolf. But that will do it for this episode. We are slowly learning of the advanced generation and the Vagans. Again, the show begins with you as the viewer, unaware of who the Vagans are. So if you're curious about that aspect of the story, I would advise that you watch the series before diving into these videos. Or not. I'm not some kind of space fascist. In our next episode, we will learn more about Wolf Inukul, one of the best Federation pilots. We also can't forget that the captain of the ship essentially stole this position and tried to cover it up. We will see Grodic try to blackmail his way out of more situations in the future. And we may or may not talk about X-Rounders, which is this universe's version of a new type. But until next time, X-Rounders, remember that you can always create a plot device that solves your problems for you. Peace.